Either America says, OK, to Putin, there's no way Ukraine will join NATO. Let's agree on that and not have a war. Or there's a war. That's pretty bleak in Kiev tonight. Yeah, well, I'm afraid that Putin probably thinks that he's already achieved a number of his objectives. First of all, he's got the West's attention. And more particularly, he's got Washington's attention. And I think one of the things that was really upsetting him was the notion that he was being relegated to second class status um, as an international power player and, and all the kudos was going to China. So now he's now put himself right in the front row as a problem which the United States needs to address. And that was something that did not exist before we, he deployed his 100,000 troops and more, whatever, around the frontiers of, of Ukraine. Secondly, something that he knows now that he has done because of Joe Biden's press uh, conference a few days ago and because of President Macron's speech in Strasbourg a couple of days ago, is that he has divided the Western alliance. Um, that NATO is not a unified force on this matter. And Biden's stupidity in talking about a minor incursion as opposed to a full invasion um, has fueled Putin's, uh, I, I suspect, self-congratulation on what he is doing. And as for Macron saying that you need a, an autonomous European response to the Ukraine crisis, i.e. without the United States and Canada inside NATO, uh, must have given him even more pleasure because the Europeans, through this obscure thing called the Normandy Project or the Normandy Process and the Minsk I Agreement and the Minsk II Agreement, Germany and France have been the European leaders of that and they have failed. So if you're sitting in the Kremlin and you're answering the question, have I sown disarray and dissent uh, among the Western powers? The answer is absolutely yes.